My name is Kaylee. I'm in my artist spotlight booth at Spring Break Art Show. I'm based in Philadelphia, originally from South Korea, but very excited to be here. So this is a body of work I started back in 2020, and it used to be called Hellscapes because at the time we were going through COVID and personally as a queer Asian woman, I was dealing with lots of chaos, uncertainty and absurdity around me. And I would say like these works were born out of fear at first, but at the same time I was retreating into my work and now they became my safe haven and now I'm finding lots of peace and quiet while working through my internal chaos through these paintings. So I think the most noticeable scene in this painting specifically is the dip and dot mess in the center and there's a funny story associated to that. So during COVID I did lots of stupid things like most of us were doing and my stupid activity was to order 30 servings of dip and dot ice cream because I realized that I can adulthood great and they came you know to my doorstep and was packed with lots of dried ice and one thing you shouldn't do is take them out of the box like you're supposed to keep them in the freezer with the ice cream to keep them in their perfect pearly form and because I'm a child I played with them in the sink you know pretending I was Harry Potter or whatnot and all 30 servings of my dip and dots melted into these disease looking blocks and I was extremely upset about it and that's actually how this painting Started. Like I was very fixated in that tragic moment and started from the center and then just made my way around it. And I don't plan my paintings out at all. I'm very spontaneous, like, you know, with composition and I like to change things a lot during the process. And I embrace that process quite a lot. Um, I think that's how the world is and what my life is like, actually. I very quickly adopt the changes and you know, if there are some unfortunate moments, I also embrace that with lots of joy and positivity. A lot of figurative work will have one, two, maybe three or four figures. Yours has 50, 60, almost 100. Do you have any inspirations for the work? My main source of inspiration is Asian perspectivalism, especially traditional Korean art where multiple um, instances of events, actions happen on a singular plane, so it could symbolize a series of actions done by one person all happening simultaneously, or it can also represent multiple figures doing something at the same time and also frozen in time like a diorama. And I like that vagueness quite a lot. I also don't like to focus on um, the individualness of figures. I like to treat them as, you know, bodies as these fleshy objects. And that's why a lot of them are unclothed. I also feel that closings are very cultural and I didn't want that added narrative. I also get lots of questions about as to why they are faceless. And I've like done multiple renditions where the figures had identities like faces and felt like that didn't add to the work. And I've reached a point where I feel pretty resolved with the form of figures and the number of figures. And I also love playing with perspectives, like making everything flat, but also three-dimensional. One reference that I like get from, you know, viewers is like Bosch, Bruegel, where Swaldo, I think we talked about yeah, it a little bit. And I spent lots of time playing Dark Souls game, which forces you to stare at the back of this like three-dimensional figure for hundreds of hours. And I like to observe like all the, you know, like really brutal things happening to that figure and I've also played you know like Witcher like Fallout lots of games where like you are looking at this figure from you know like outside the screen you know in this like observer mode and yeah I think the environments of my paintings and the type of interactions my figures have with that environment mainly comes from the games I play at the moment. This is an extension of my Dark Souls era, actually. I'm very into medieval weapons at the moment, especially flails. 
but this is also very strongly associated with Korean mythology. You no, know, when I'm talking about hell, I'm not talking about biblical hell, I'm talking about Korean hell specifically. And there are multiple layers in Korean hell, like you pass the test in this one layer, you go to another one. This particular layer of hell that I like the most is the one that you go to when you don't listen to your parents, because to me, that is the most Asian thing ever. <laughs> and there is this one layer of hell where children's souls go to because they're pure, they don't deserve to, you know, go through all these like suffering. Instead, they are guardians of these flowers that dominate people's emotions. And there's this one particular flower that makes people cry out of guilt, out of frustration, out of joy, out of like sadness. And I wanted to think about that flower in relation to what's happening in our world where we are inflicting so much pain onto each other, but I think in order for us to do that, we should also be prepared to be hurt ourselves. So that's the main, yeah, like source of inspiration for these flower flails or weeping flails, I like to call them. I think Philadelphia is a great place for emerging artists. We have multiple very prestigious art institutions. I think there are like six or even more. Um, it is unstructured, but in the best way possible. And Philadelphia had a huge impact on my work as well because I make work about chaos and absurdity. Philly is the place for that, like, you know, in both good and like bad ways. It is an incredible city, like filled with so much potential. And it can be rough, it can be very violent, but there are also people who fight against that with so much energy. And I think the art scene reflects that very well. Tell me about the two-person show you have up right now. So I currently have a two-person show titled Killing Me Softly at E-Way Gallery located in Venice, um, LA. I'm showing with Anne Thorncroft, who is a 80-year-old painter who works on these like beautiful abstract paintings. And I think the colors and the narratives behind our work work very well together. And I also have a group show created by Andrew and Ember, um, the organizers of the fair at Steve Turner Gallery in about two weeks. Because I work around that, you know, Asian narrative, I've been searching for the gallery and the curator who understands that. And there has always been this like frustration around finding someone who fully understood my experiences, like, you know, not as an artist, but as an Asian person, especially during COVID era. And I got to meet e through um, one of my collectors um, and we connected instantly. And we had a lovely conversation about you know, our own like struggles growing up in an Asian household and also our experience with you know transitioning from Asian society to American society and the shift that happens in your mindset and the way you view the world. I guess like, I can talk a little bit about this like huge change that's coming to contemporary art scene and how people generate image, especially with the development of AI technology. I think the way people see art will change and I feel like a lot of people feel very pessimistic about it, but I'm actually very hopeful for the fine art scene because I think now we are able to focus more on the value of something more material, something that exists in real life. And I'm hoping to see painters um, using this as an opportunity to really voice their minds and ideas more actively into the world. AI can be an extremely useful tool in that regard. And like I'm an educator and I have lots of students who are very actively realizing their ideas, utilizing AI technology. So I'm like very excited for what's to come in the art world. I always tell people that my ideal life would look like me in a cottage churning butter. Like I am a very introverted person. Like I spend, you know, my spare time gaming and also baking. I like constantly, you know, filling my mind with something, with some sort of activity. And if I did not have access to art making for a long period of time, I would probably go crazy. It is unimaginable for me to not be an artist, to not practice art. Is there anyone you want to shout out? Sure, I would like to thank Guava Ri, um, who is my best friend and also 
a co-founder of Project Erie, which is a curatorial project we've been running since last year. And we've been focusing on emerging artists, like especially women of color. I don't think I would have been able to do all that without her. She's been so supportive of this and like my practice as a whole, but also um, my growth as an educator, as um, a curator. And I'm excited to continue this journey with her. Thank you, Guava. Cool, perfect.